So welcome to another war game review from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a reasonably new game from Compass Games. This is, uh, alright. Red Poppy's Campaigns, Volume 3, Artillery Assault. Assault art Artillery. No, I got it wrong. You got it wrong. Dang it. We I practiced that so much. <sighs> it is designed Take by... Take two. <laughs> this is designed by John Gorkowski. And he created the system... Uh, so, Volume 3, this is a series of World War One battles that are fought in a two-player Hex Encounter war game. And we have not played Volume 1 or 2. No. We no. have not played those. This is my first foray into it, and uh, right off the bat, I was impressed at how easy it was to learn. Well, I, I was impressed at the ease of getting into it, and I really think a lot of the mechanics make a lot of sense for yes. World War One. It really does. It feels slow in plotting. It's not real. You don't break out. It's... Lots of lines and trenches and barbed wire and so to me it felt very World War One esque. Yeah, yeah, it had mm. it, and I don't know, I don't know. I I enjoyed the scale of the game. And yeah, I'll just make sure that I. Uh, they said what it was, and I think they are. Uh, They are companies. Companies, yes. okay. They're companies. And, and we played a lot of other war games that are company scale. Yes. Not a lot. We've played some. Some. And I think it's, you know, so <clears throat> many more are at an operational level, where mm -hmm. it's battalions, regiments, and all that. And so at a company scale, I actually really like, because you get, you get some of the operational feel mm -hmm. in the scale, but you also get some of the tactical feel. Well, and, and you get some of the toys too, like yes. machine guns, mortars, flamethrowers, anti-tank yes. guns. <clears throat> those are all very cool. It's always cool to have those actual yes. units that are machine gun units. Yeah, it's, and that's all they do. It's right. It's, it, but you know, I've, we've played other games. For example, the company scale system from Compass. Yeah, is much more complicated. Oh, I don't think there's a doubt. There's a lot of extra steps. This really cut to the quick, and it was. I, I thought very understandable. Yeah, but, I mean, so the actual, the rules, tw well, twenty pages. It's, tw it's twenty. Tw it's twenty-four pages of rules. But, but I actually felt like the rules were very well explained. Uh, yeah, and and like three or four pages is an incredibly detailed example uh, example of play. Uh, but yeah, like I don't know. How, and a good chunk of the rules is like the terrain effects chart, which right. you played a war game before. You know what the terrain yeah. should look like, and it's all on here. Like, mostly, you're looking at the initiative. Mm -hmm. You read that once. Very, like, and then you're looking at what the commands do. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really most of the rules. Yeah. There's a couple, like, bits and pieces here uh, of... Uh, well, things that you get into. Yeah, I, I think but, some of the stuff that's added that you got to think is like when you move into wire, what happens? You, you know, yes, you, you have to stop your movement when you want to go into melee. You have to spend an extra, what was it, one movement point to yes. be able to do that. So the system I thought was very clear, and but, then they yes. added those little elements that just made it a little bit different. And and I was yeah. totally okay with that. It it felt like we were playing a game that was designed around this conflict where you're you're up against each other and you're doing a little you know, using some of your assets, using some of your guns to to do different things and just hoping for something to break through. And Yeah, I I, I just was impressed with reading the rules that after I had read them, it didn't feel like I'd read twenty four pages of rules. Got it. And the gameplay, I didn't feel like I was trying to remember 24 pages of rules mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like I read the rules, I read half the rules is really what happened. Yeah. And then we started playing and I knew everything that I could do and was supposed to do. Yeah. And I had to look up like how to do the artillery barrage and you look it up and it's like, it's this yep. and it's not complicated. No. I just really, really liked how, I was surprised, I think, mm -hmm. as well, how clean and, frankly, simple the system is for and, a war game. And I can remember maybe two, three weeks ago, you were talking about this game. We're like, we're going to play this next. Actually, it's been, I think, two weeks. Yeah. And you, I, I remember you were a little worried about it because you felt like the game was much more complex and deep than actually 
it was. Yes. Once we got yes. it on the table, I think that myth kind of disappeared, and I very think it's quickly, very yeah. playable. Yeah, because uh, I think it's they said, yeah, average time to play, 2 to 40 hours. Anytime you have a 40-hour war game, yeah. a lot of the time... That's, you know, because things really slow down, like when you get into, like, a really crunchy combat phase mm -hmm. or something here. And this just mechanically didn't have that. No. And I, and I yeah, I read the rules and was like, oh, I'm ready to play. Yeah. And, and frankly, I think we covered a majority of everything that's in the game in this scenario that we chose. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure we didn't, you know, we used those extra weapons. We used blockhouses. We used... Uh, there were trenches there. I mean, everything was basically covered. We did several different types of... We didn't have off-map artillery that we called in, but there was a creeping barrage. Yeah, there, there was a creeping barrage, which is... Which was a cool from concept. From off-map. It's yeah. already there, you know. But yeah, I, I don't know. I really, really was impressed with, with that aspect of the game. Yeah. But yeah, well, this, you know, part this is part of our Guns of August... World War One, which has now become the Guns of October. I hate to say, <laughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to play all the World War One games. Yeah. Now this is also a 2021 game. It is. Yep. So it ticks a couple boxes as well, <clears throat> and so I was excited to play this because it is new and the system has been around for a couple of years, but I haven't, you know, just haven't got round to it. And so yep. finally, kind of getting this to the table, people have been asking us about, <clears throat> oh, have you played Red Poppies? You know, what do you think? And <clears throat> This I don't know about the other two, but this particular right. one can be a two mapper. Yep, and it's two maps long ways. So just bear that in mind with table space. So you need a long table. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's not your two kind of side by side. It's long ways. Yeah, and it's a massive long trench line, mm -hmm. and you've got the cool tanks to break through, run over the wire, breach all of that, fill the troops through. Yeah, and uh, and it's this. It's you know it's. October 1917, so it's fairly late war. Um, so the Germans are less strong in some areas. Mm -hmm. On the on the other map, there's a bit more of a stronger resistance that they had. Okay. But uh, but you get a lot of the a lot of the tactical feel. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I've done a barrage. It's kind of knocked out or pinned a bunch of units, and it's breached the wire here and there. And then I'm going to pour units through. I'm going to drive the tanks over the wire to break the wire. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to follow up with infantry attacks. I've got my machine guns. I've got my flamethrowers. I've got my engineers. And so you do get into that some of the nice tactical feel of, I spend that movement point. I jump into the trench. We do a melee. Yeah. And everyone dies. Very deadly. And, and you know. Which is hilarious because we always talk about that. Yeah. Most of the games that we really enjoy always have a very brutal melee yep. that is you're on you're on a knife's edge you're trying to make sure you don't die and frankly in our melees more often than not both sides died not every time a lot but, of the but time quite yeah. a few times because you're having to it uses this very interesting thing where you as the attacker never roll the dice yeah you're not rolling the dice as the attacker each unit has a cohesion rating and as the defender you're having to Add the attack rating of the unit attacking you to your defensive to cohesion, your defensive basically. cohesion rating. You're rolling two d six. Most of those defensive ratings were seven, eight, or I think there were a couple of nines. The tanks were, tanks were nines, but everything else was seven and eight. So on two d six, your average roll is going to be a five to a seven. Yeah, and then you're adding two, sometimes three, depending on whether you're in a trench or in the open. Yeah. And we found that. Man, you're you're disorganized a lot. You're well. If you're in melee, there's no defensive well, terrain, right? Yeah, it's just like yeah, because you're on top of each other. Die. And I, yeah, and it's I don't know. I it was it made it very interesting because you can sit here issuing all your fire orders, mm -hmm. plinking each other. I'm sat in my trench. Frankly, I'm not that worried about it. Yeah, you can withstand a lot of things with just average rolls. Yep. And uh, but but it's. If you can survive going over the top, withstanding all of the uh, reaction fires and, it, you know, depending on how long it is, you know, any other fire orders that come at you, if you can get into the trenches, like, more often than not, there's going to be a hole there. <laughs> yeah. You might die as well, but you will have You've reached a hole, hole in yep. the line. Yep. And so, you know, do I commit 
two guys against one in melee. My recommendation would be no. Yeah. I did that a couple of times. It did not work out well for me. In your mind, it actually should work out better for you because you have more options for you to roll a bad roll, but you... I don't, I don't know. It's just... Yeah. Melee's different because you're actually fighting each other yeah, back. It's so on, you are on, rolling on as a, the attacker. On a one, on a, but you do it on a one-to-one basis. Yeah. So I've, I've got one dude. I can only attack one of your guys. Right. So we're going to have an exchange... One each of our guys is going to die, most likely. Yeah. But you'll have someone left. Yep. So do I commit two guys to the melee, or do I risk it for a biscuit? And so, yeah, it, it, it it's a tough choice. Because every time you do that, you're then like thinning your lines elsewhere. Yep. But you like, do I want to guarantee this kind of result here? Yep. I, I don't know. It's just it's very very interesting because <clears throat> you can sit there, and you know, in ranged fire, it's a little bit different, where. If I've got a machine gun, I can shoot your stack of guys and everyone in that stack has to defend yep. because it's area fire. Mm-hmm. And so you're like, I want to get out of that so I stop taking the volume of fire, you get into the melee yep. so that you know it's a bit more accurate. One dude might die, but at least two guys aren't going to get yeah. hit. Yeah. I don't know, it, it, there's there's neat choices in that as well that I enjoyed. Well, and, and you mentioned it, the plinking back and forth from range, it's very hard. It's yeah. very hard because those trenches really offer a big uh, combat you know, modifier. Very, very strong defensive So it, modifier. it's hard. We found that, I think that's why I started doing more melees because it was so hard to hit yep. and cause damage. More often than not, if you hit, you're going to flip them over and it's called, dis- is it disordered? Uh, they bec- No, they are. I can't remember the word. Dispersed. Dispersed. And, you know, they if they get hit again, then they're going to be eliminated. But it, it's hard to do it because once your guys are dispersed, their stats go down. And then you got to take your orders to flip them back over and reorganize them. And it's just... Which that is a very strong investment of your orders. Absolutely. Yeah. You as the defender were doing that way more than I was. Yes, and it's very painful to do because you can only do one at a time. And and that's the the tough thing. And the way you're, they're called command couplets because you're going to have a certain amount of points and you take a turn, I take a turn. And we just go back and forth. And it's like most of the time you have two or three actions, you don't have a lot. Yeah, you're basically never going to have more than five. And 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 that's very rare. And and as the French, I had 25 units on the board. It was hard to move them all. Yes. I mean, it really was. Now, you can move groups together when they're adjacent and they're the same type. But then, and they're yeah. doing the same action. But it's limited. Yeah, it's it is. It's not like, oh, I've got like all these guys. You're like, yeah. it's this, you know, within six hexes, 12 units. And no more than 12 units. Identical yeah. units. Yep, because you can't have the engineer and the machine gunner. Yep. It's just the infantrymen. So it's... That was also a puzzle. I'm not sure I really figured that out. I, I felt like I was doing a poor job of moving cohesively, well, advancing together. And like all these games, setup is important. And it's a game yeah. that you're going to set it up. They don't give you any advice on how no, to do it. No, they don't. I would uh, do things differently. You set it up, you play it, and then you reset it up knowing how you oh, should, here's what I should at that done. point. Or yeah. at least knowing a little bit better. You're going to yeah. do it again and again. But... Uh, I don't know. I, I enjoyed the fact that it felt very World War One. I. I, I agree one hundred percent. You both start the game. You're both in your trench lines. You can shoot each other all day long, yeah. and nothing will happen. And, and I think we did that for the first couple yep. of turns. We were just plink, 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 and then I realized I've got the numbers advantage here. Yes. I need to go over the top. So I started doing that and I started pushing you back. Yeah, and then you know, you're going to take you have, I'm going to do some reaction fire whilst you yep. go over the top. So I'll get a couple good machine gun hits in, but you know, you you just can't order that many people to do your no. reaction fire effectively. And so at some point the wave's going to hit you. Yep. Uh I, I don't know, and it, it just that whole the ranged fire in the trenches, yeah, and just it's not going to happen. Put it in your you're, pocket, run into the trenches. You're forced to blow that yeah. whistle to get everyone yeah. over the top, to get into melee, clear the trenches, and then and then past that, then you start getting into the open ground. Yeah, and it's you have to do a really organized rearguard action as the mm-hmm. Germans and mm-hmm. the French are trying to barrel them down. 
the tanks only move two, the infantry move three, so they can yep. outpace the tanks eventually. Yep. And uh, and so do you you know do you do you stick with them? Yep. Or do you just like outpace them and you're like tanks have done their job, they've destroyed the wire, we've gotten over the trench lines, yeah. And let's just kind of chase them yep. down and win the game. But I think you get a lot of World War One goodness in that aspect mm-hmm. from it as well. And I also liked the tanks. The tanks were very cool. Yes. They had several different different modifiers and benefits. You know, they can't really go into melee. They really I mean they can, but they're that's not what they're good at. Um they can go over trenches. They they create the breaches, like you said. So it yeah. you, you gotta figure out how to use all the different elements. I also found it very interesting the way you had set up some of your initial units. I was like, ooh, I really got to get that anti-tank gun because you just took out, I think you took out one or two of my tanks, and I'm like, oh, I can't have that happening all day. Yeah. So I had to kind of make a concerted effort to go for that. That was interesting because it gave me a lot of different choices of, of how I was going to do it. The other thing that was really cool was that initial barrage that created some of those breaches yeah, in the line. Yeah, the, um, the French start off with, with oh, what do they call it? Some like pulverizing yeah. barrage it's just like pre-game massive just bang yeah. Ev- everyone's gonna roll for dispersion and a bunch of people might die yeah it's it's you know so that kind of set up what i was trying to do because bam i formed a hole right here i killed a couple of your units luckily i rolled what two sixes in a row yeah your units were removed and that created breaches and it's like ooh, i'm gonna rush that so it Every game that's going to be different in that scenario. Yes. And what's cool though is is that you do that you do that after you've set up. So you yes. can't you, you still have to react yep. to where that hole appears. You're like, crap, my assets yep. are a little bit further over here. Exactly. I'm still yep. gonna go So I had around. to plan it to figure out It's still and, very cool. And that made it interesting. Once again, we play these games a lot yeah. because we want to make decisions. We want to figure out how to do what we need to do and do it well. Yes. And I, I actually enjoyed it. What I'll do is I'll show you the map and how some of this works, and then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So here's a look at the map, or at least a small portion of the map. The map is actually two 22 by 34s, and they go landscape. Uh, so we're just going to zoom in on a small section here. Uh, this is part of one of the scenarios, and uh, we'll just show you some of the mechanics. Because what I actually appreciate about this game is it's actually not very complicated. Um, it seems like it would be quite long. It's... You know, seven days, a lot of turns in a day, but, and then a lot of impulses within each turn, but the reality is, is that you're not, you know, you're not going to max out on all of that stuff. So, the first thing you do in a turn is you roll for initiative. So, we're going to do a, you roll d6s, and we'll do a black is for the French side, and we rolled a two and a one. And so, this is what I'm talking about. So, in this one, the French side have the initiative. And the difference between the two is the number of command couplets. And there's a little track just off map with this little command couplets thing on there. That's basically that's the number of commands you get to you get to issue. Uh, if each command couplet, the initiative player issues one command, and then the reaction player issues one. So, for example, if we roll a six and a one, the difference is five. French are going to have the initiative, but there'll be five couplets. So you'll do a lot more in that particular turn. So two and a one, it's a very short turn. So what you're going to do is you're going to then look at your little menu of commands. And the commands are just listed up here. So you can call off-map artillery or cancel off-map artillery, deploy units, dig units, fire or move. And you can do reaction fire as a free kind of thing as long as you've got a unit who isn't spent. So within those things, you're looking at uh, some counters here. And we'll kind of go through what these mean and what they are. I'll just pick up these well. Let me get some ones that aren't on the map, just so I don't mess it up. Let me get some out of the dead pile. So, we have these little guys here. So, the hex number in the top right is the range in hexes, obviously. And then the top right is their firepower uh, when they're doing ranged combat. So this is a plus three. This one's a plus two, but below it it has a bracketed plus three. That bracketed number is its firepower when firing anti-tank. So this has a you know, it's got a gun on it, it can shoot anti-tank. This is infantry, they don't have a, a, an anti-tank firepower. Now the bottom left hand corner is the melee value, and uh, if it's boxed, it adds one if you're meleeing another AFV, so tank on tank can get pretty brutal if they're up close. If it's underlined, they actually subtract one if they're meleeing um, 
an AFV, right? These then it's riflemen. They're not equipped with um, enough stuff to make a significant difference uh, in melee against an AFV. Then this middle larger number, seven and a nine, that's its cohesion value. You're trying to roll under that value to maintain your cohesion. And then the bottom right is their movement value. Um, so there's a, there's a quite a few numbers in some of these. So basically, to move, you're going to move, right? you got three movement points, so you can move three spaces, or you look at your little terrain effects chart that's going to um, tell you uh, if moving certain things costs one. And uh, when you move into wire, you have to stop, uh, and then when you can jump into a trench, so you can move into a space, you know, through a breach in the wire, but then you have to jump down into the trench. So if you're moving into the space, it's one, you're moving into the hex area. To actually get into the trench, you've got to spend another movement point, and that movement point can also um, initiate melee for free, basically. Um, but if you don't move into a trench, you have to spend a movement point. But um, that movement is, you know, very much what you would want. Now, what's important here is, especially early on in games or during the next day when units might be uh, have a little bit more coherency, um, you can order groups. They're called masses. You mass some troops. So what you can do is, normally an order goes onto this unit or onto a stack of uh, identical units. Or if you've got massed units, to use that term, so we've got uh, you can order up to 12 identical units. So we've got all these identical late war French infantries. Um, up to, so it's 12 units and up to six adjacent, and they have to be adjacent. You can't have a gap in the line. Adjacent hexes. And you can give all of them the same order. So it's kind of almost like a, little, like a big push. You can order all of these infantry units, if they're uh, adjacent to each other, to, to move or to fire. Um, that's one of the, other, the the ways that you can do that. And then to fire, one of the things I actually enjoy about this game and I do think is interesting, and I, and I'm, and I'm, it's something that I've kind of been thinking about more in wargaming recently, is if I've got a stack of two units, because um, which is that's the most you can stack. You can stack four units, two AFVs and two infantry, but I've got two infantry units. When they attack, let's say we'll just pop some Germans here, when they attack, they do not combine their firepowers. They fire separately. And I guess it just represents space and also that level of cohesion between that many units at this scale. And I just think the you have a volume of small fire versus I'm going to get my big old stack and do one big massive unfailable roll. And, and the differences between those two in wargaming is... It's always an interesting dichotomy, I'm, and, I, and, I'm, and I really like this for World War One games. So, what you do when you attack is you don't roll to attack, you basically roll to defend. Um, so, these two are going to both attack him, and so they're going to roll separately, but they don't roll. This guy's going to defend twice. And what he does is he's going to roll 2d6, and you have to roll under your cohesion. But... The modifier to this is your is their um, firepower. So if I'm out in the open, the modifier is simply their firepower. Plus, so, so 2d6 plus 3, incredibly, so is a 7. So I actually pass. Uh, but I've got to roll it again. 2d6 plus 3, and this is a massive fail. So this is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And 11 is the magic number in this game. Because if you're under fire or in melee and you fail your cohesion check by 11 or more, you're eliminated. No, no messing around, you're dead. So you get dead, not great. If you fail normally, so we've got 5, 6, 7, 8, 8's greater than 7, you get flipped over your, to your dispersed side and then you become spent. So you can get into some lethality if you fail badly, but then you start getting into, well, this game has all this all these trenches printed on. So I'm gonna sit in my little trench, and the, if if they're attacking into a trench, this trench, if you look at the terrain effects modifier, gives a minus three if you're an infantry unit, which completely cancels out a neuter's 
their um, their uh, their firepower modifier. And so 2d6, rolling an 11 or more, is much, much rarer that you're going to die. Still possible, but rarer you're going to die outright. More often than not, you're going to roll uh, averages of 6, 7, and 8, where you'll fail on two out of, or one out of those three results, basically. And obviously there's a, a larger spread than that. But that's, that's a lot of what this game is. When you get into melee, melee is much more brutal. Um, you're just, you just lose your terrain modifiers and you're just killing each other. Uh, so once you get into the trenches and it's hand-to-hand -hand combat, things get real violent. Uh, you bring in the, uh, the, uh, the flamethrowers and they sit in here with their plus five melee just torching places. Um, and then you've got your tanks rolling over. And this, this is what I really enjoyed about this game is uh, assault artillery. You've got the tanks, they roll over, breach all of the fences, all of the wire that's been set up, and then your infantry flood through behind them. And that's such an iconic image and, and an iconic tactic from late war World War One. And you get to do it in this, and it's very meaningful. Because if you move into wire, you get hung up, and you can't move, and your advance basically stalls. So you drive the tanks through, breach all the wire, pour the men through. It feels very World War One in that way. And then you get into, you jump into the trenches, and it is just a bloodbath. And the French have, you know, more forces, and are going to get something of an upper hand, but they have to make so much progress that, again, over the course of the battle, that's going to, you know, they're going to get stretched thin, they're going to have a lot of attrition and casualties, uh, and that's it. But basically, you do these couplets back and forth, moving, deploying guys, flipping them over, unflipping them, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're infant, your mortar's moving, he can deploy, then he can shoot next time. You do that back and forth, go through turns, and, and that's that's really the core of the game. It is not a complicated game by any stretch of the imagination, but you it's complex in the sense that there's a lot of it, so it takes a long time, and you have some real interesting decision points to make about where you're breaching, making holes in the lines, how your artillery barrage is affecting enemy units, you know, strike while the iron's hot and all that kind of stuff. So what we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the game, uh, and... Uh, I, I mean, there is. We just played a scenario. The game is like five times as big as what yeah. we saw. Yeah, there. there's a ton of dudes. Well, like I said, across two maps, two to forty hours, right? I mean, you put both maps up here. You put all the units on the line. You, you're. It's going to be. You're going to play this in three or four sittings, probably, and yeah. maybe five. And we wanted to just partly because I'm starting to get a little World War One weary. Sure, we've played a lot of these games. I'm really looking now for how does this model World War One? What is interesting and unique about it? And there we we talked about some of those things that are interesting, yes. unique, and very World War One. So because of that, we played a shorter scenario. I'd actually I, like. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't have forty hours. That's, no, that's the reality of it. We're not those kind of war. There's a lot of war gamers out there that are going to set this up. They're going to play it over six weekends in a row and finish it. I I don't. We just can't do that. No. One, it would, would not survive, um, y you know, the different things going on. Yes. Two, we, we, we've got so many other games that we got to take a look it's at. True. It, it's true, it's true. It's hard, and I'd really like to play Volume 1 and 2 Yep. and and see how they're different. So so that's something maybe in my mind I want to add and figure out how in the future yes. we do that. But the, so the, like, the series rules... The 24 pages odd. So, so we don't true. have to learn a whole new game. The, the the volume rules are like a third of a page. Yeah. Like, it's you don't have to learn anything. No. Like, it's all right here. Yep. I don't have to learn anything for the whole new yep. game, basically. And so we could get those other volumes and very quickly... Very quickly. Set them up, get into them, and experience the different, different uh, modules. Yeah. So if you do like it, know that there's more out yeah. there. And... I would be surprised if there wasn't more underway as well. Yeah. I don't know for sure. I don't know anything about that, but maybe I should look. But I'm, there's no reason that they wouldn't make more because I think these are quite popular. Well, I think they're popular because they are, they they are, uh, you know, it's it's got a lot of the good elements of World War One, and it is that smaller scale that gives you some of those tactical choices. Yeah, and it's, it really and does. It's, and it's very playable. Very so. playable. And there's also, at least in this one, no reason you couldn't play the solo. No. There's no, no. hidden information. There's yep. no nothing. You just do best possible action. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, it's usually quite obvious what that should be, or you make a roll. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And I, if I was going to play this, you know, if I was going to do that, I'd play like as the French, because mm-hmm. the onus on you to do the offensive is probably more yeah. intensive. You know, the yeah. Germans are going to like. The German doctrine is let's do an extremely strong rearguard action and make sure that we yeah. don't like lose. Right. right. It's easier to kind of automate and step aside yep. from there. Yep. But yeah, there's no there's no reason that you could not play this solo, uh, even though it's a two player game. Yeah. It will be. It's also great. It's a two player game. We played it, but d- don't don't be scared off by that if you don't have anyone to play with. Well, if and, you're interested and, in it. And if you're if you're more of a, a, an operational or a, a grand strategy player we've played some really grand great grand strategic yes world war one games you know paths of glory lamps are going out i I have i have now realized i really prefer those games Mm -hmm. but this gives you a lot of that tactical stuff it's just different it It feels very it's it's a very different style of game yep and yeah i see i like both they both are entirely different and i don't know this one more than some of the other ones that are like battles that mm-hmm. we played, this one I actually felt was, I don't know, I felt like it was like, yeah, this is what I envision a World War One battle to be, mm-hmm. especially late war. I'm rolling the tanks over, destroying the wire, I've the rules are like, and then I'm going to throw my men in behind them to go through those gaps, mm-hmm. and then I, you know, and then there's rules for them to jump in the trench and get stuck in. Yeah, that that to me is so. Like, the rules do that for you. So, yeah. like, you're doing those things. I don't know. I, I felt like in some of the other games that are battles, it's like, you know, oh, we kind of shoot each other and some of us die. Yeah. This one, the actual actions that you're doing felt very World War One. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. that yep. Which, which I very much appreciated in this. Yeah. I thought that was a, that was a big plus for me. And, and it was harder to kill enemy units... Except with melee, yeah, melee was a lot. Yeah, melee's but, total crap. But once again, that plinking with the single shot rifles, it was just yeah, it was it's, hard. It's yeah, right. It was, as it's supposed to, and, be. and that really felt once again very World War One. And, yes. and I think that's what this game, you know, promotes itself as. It's called assault artillery for a reason as well. There's a ton of that kind of thing. Yeah, you drop all the anti, and then yep. you bring out the tanks. Yep. Which is, you know, obviously this wasn't the first ever battle to do that, yeah. but like, gosh, it feels real interesting to do mm-hmm. that in a World War One setting where your tanks just creep along with their little two right. movement. Right. They got sweet guns on them, but it's like, <laughs> yep. just limping along yep. and your men are like, we're just walking yep. faster than these. Well, it's and no they don't deal. have big range. I think their range was... Three. Three. You know, so that that's not a lot. Nope, it is not. And it's, you're right, they're pretty plotting... Pretty non-mobile. They're just moving guns. Yeah, it's but that's what it is. It's moving. assault all to artillery. Yeah, right. And you, you you breach those lines and then yep. you kind of outrun them and then it's your men are charging down to take take the villages and yeah. win the game. I don't know. I, it's very very cool. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it a lot. So, uh, assault artillery, volume three of the Red Poppies campaigns from John Kolkowski and Compass Games. This just came out this year. So check it out if you're interested. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm Alexander from PlayersAid.com. And I'm Grant.